Hey, Dave the Butterfly Guy here. I'm standing in my backyard in front of my butterfly garden. Today I wanted to talk to you about the plight of the monarch butterfly. This is probably the most important video I'm going to make because it impacts all of us. Losing butterflies and monarchs dying off impacts our environment, our ecology, and the world we live in. And it's so important we find out about it and see if there's some things we can do to help save the monarchs. I found out about the plight of the monarch about five years ago and when I heard they were dying off in the millions I was like I got to do something about this and I got to get involved and try and do what I can to try and help the monarch survive. So that's what this video is all about today. Before we talk about the plight of the monarch butterfly I think it's important we talk about some of the things that make the monarch unique and one of the things that make them most unique is how they migrate. They have one of the most spectacular migrations on earth for any animal, any insect, where they'll migrate as far away as Canada down to central Mexico. So let's get started and dig in and take a deeper look at their migration. The great migration for the monarch butterfly starts in the fall, usually in October. Butterflies from as far away as Canada, in Ontario, and Manitoba, and the central plains of the U.S. will fly over 3,000 miles to get to the fall migration sites in central Mexico. On the west coast, the butterflies of Idaho, Washington, and Oregon will work their way down to the California coast. And on the east side of the U.S., many monarchs will work their way down to Florida for their winter sites. The western monarchs, they'll gather to roost in eucalyptus, the Monterey cypress, Monterey pines, on the Pacific coastline of California. But the numbers have been dwindling. Recently, they estimated only 30,000 monarchs, which is down from a million 200,000 just 20 years ago. So we have issues not only on the West Coast, but across the whole U.S. with the plight of the monarch butterfly. So I'm certainly concerned about the West Coast monarch, but in greater numbers of the monarchs that migrate through the central plains of the U.S., over 90% of the monarch population flows through the central U.S. over the Sierra Madres in Mexico to an area just west of Mexico City in the states of Mexico and Mikeokan. It's in the Transvolcanic Mountains where these butterflies end up wintering. They group on 12 different mountaintops in this trawl. Uh, transvolcanic range. It's a spectacular sight to see millions of monarchs congregate to this small area in Mexico. It's an area of only about 15 acres this past year, which is about the size of the city of New York. So it's a really small concentrated area where these monarchs get together. And because it's such a small area, it does allow scientists to come in and estimate the counts of monarchs annually. And they've been doing this for over 20 years. And back in the 90s, they measured in hectares. And a hectares is about two and a half acres. There was years where there was 15 to 20 hectares of monarchs. In one hectare, there can be up to 50 million butterflies. So in the 90s, when there was 15 to 20 hectares of monarchs, that means there was up to 800 million monarchs that were wintering in Mexico. Today, most recently, just three or four hectares of monarchs, two to 300 million. That's a loss of 500 million monarchs in just 20 years. So this has given us a good foundation at understanding the migration of the monarch. In the spring, they turn it around and they fly north and start the process over with laying eggs, creating caterpillars, and it continues to cycle on. But there's a reason we've lost 500 million butterflies over the last 20 years. And I think it's important for us to understand why, so we can do some things that can maybe reduce the loss of monarchs in the future. So let's look into those primary reasons for the plight of the monarch butterfly. All right, the first cause is loss of habitat. So for monarchs, the habitat is all about the milkweed plant. There's a lot of different kinds of milkweed, butterfly weed, common milkweed, swamp milkweed, but the butterfly's whole life evolves around milkweed. They lay their eggs on it. When the caterpillars come, that's all they eat is milkweed leaves. 
And if there's no milkweed leaves, there's no monarchs or no monarch caterpillars. Once the caterpillars turn into a chrysalis and they go back into being a butterfly, the butterfly looks for nectar and pollen. And again, the milkweed provides great pollen, pollinating flowers. So our issue is we're losing milkweed. Why are we losing milkweed? We're losing it to development and we're losing it to big agriculture. Here's a picture. You can see the corn is growing up right by the road and then the road is mowed and there is no milkweed in sight. There's acres and acres of farmland growing across our country and with that there's no room for milkweed. This used to be wild grasses, milkweed and flowers and now we have huge farms that have tons of rows of plants whether it's soybeans or corn and what do they do to make sure we get these great crops? They put down pesticides and they set down herbicides and it's killing all the milkweed. And you can see this is a huge issue. It's estimated we lost 165 million acres of habitat for butterflies across the U.S. All right, this seems a bit daunting that we're losing all this habitat. We're not going to change agriculture across the U.S. one person at a time, but there are things we can do to create habitat for monarch butterflies. Here's some things. First of all, we each can plant some milkweed in our yard and in the areas we live. We can create a butterfly garden with pollinating flowers and milkweed. And for those of you who are really zealous, go talk to a farmer about leaving ditches and buffers around their crops. To let them be natural. Let milkweed grow in them. Don't put pesticides and herbicides on those ditches and in those areas around your farm. All right, so we've talked about the loss of habitat as a big reason for a decline in monarchs. The next reason I'd like to talk about is the deforestation. And what I mean by deforestation is the loss of trees in central Mexico, in that transvolcanic area just west of Mexico City where the monarch butterflies migrates to during the winter. It's made up of these fir trees. And on each of these fir trees, there can be over 10,000 monarch butterflies during the winter. And unfortunately, this is an economically depressed area for Mexico. And although it's illegal to cut trees, the government's done a great job in Mexico of making these biospheres or these sanctuaries for the monarch. But people are uh, economically depressed. They're trying to feed their families and they will come in and cut down trees because they can make some money selling the lumber. So losing these trees in Mexico is a huge issue. And despite these local economic needs, there's an organization working in Mexico trying to resolve it. So it can be overwhelming from the U.S. trying to figure out how to deal with this, but there is a way we can support this organization and make a big impact on reducing the amount of deforestation in Mexico. So I met Dr. Ellen Sharp speaking to a group of butterfly enthusiasts in Iowa about four years ago. And she runs a, a group called the Butterflies and Their People Project. It's a great organization. She lives right on the site in those grounds in Mexico where the butterflies roost in the winter. And she hires local people to help their economy and they, those people she hires, three or four of them right now, protect the sanctuary. They walk the grounds and talk to people that are considering cutting down trees. So what can we do? We can make a donation to the group. It just takes a few thousand dollars to add labor to protect that area. We can also visit. It's a spectacular area. They're looking for tourist dollars. So visit uh, that area and try and add to their economy. Okay, so we've talked about the loss of habitat and deforestation. The last area I'd like to talk about is climate change. Climate change is a really complex issue. And in fact, there's some people that still don't even think there is climate change going on, despite all the forest fires we see and droughts and severe uh, hurricanes and the extreme weathers and the extreme rains and the melting of ice caps. So all these things are going on. And with that, it creates some issues for the monarch butterfly. And so there was one extreme weather event that took place in uh, central Mexico in 2016, 
where there was a deep freeze, and this deep freeze killed over 36% of the wintering population. So these extreme weather events with that many butterflies in one spot can have a devastating impact to the butterfly, the monarch butterfly. Dealing with climate change can feel daunting, but if individually we act, collectively it can make a big difference. So I have three thoughts on what we can each do to try and make an impact on climate change. The first one is to reduce our own carbon footprint by reducing how much we fly or how much we drive. Also, adjust our cooling and heating in our house to be more efficient. Secondly, support companies that have a mission to be green. It's built into their values. And third, use your vote. Vote for politicians that are focused on policy that fights climate change. If we do these things, it can make a difference on climate change. Okay, this is Dave the Butterfly Guy. I thought I would recap for you what we learned about the plight of the monarch butterfly. Number one reason is the loss of habitat. Number two, deforestation in central Mexico. And number three, climate change. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you like it, I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dave the Butterfly Guy. Share it with your friends. Like it. Again, that's all I have today. It's Dave the Butterfly Guy checking out.